So because I do a lot of traveling, I need to have a, a place to stay. And so I've had travel trailers for 35 years. And um, the actually the best one that I found is this Casita. This is my second one that I've had. And it's uh, very small, but it has all the, everything that I need in it. The only thing is it's designed for a minivan to pull it around on highways, but I don't go on highways. I, I, I go on highways, but then I go off the highway into country that is maybe doesn't even have a road because of training dogs and photographing. And so I needed some extensive work done on this trailer. When I say extensive, I mean rebuilding it from the ground up, the frame, the every the hitch, the the solar system, the every every part of the trailer needed beefing up. I wanted to have the toughest casita on earth. And uh, this truck and other vehicles I've had have been rebuilt by Chris Moore at Texas Customs in Bryan, Texas. And so I asked him whether he could tackle this job. And he said, <laughs> easy. So I've invited him to come and go through the things we've done to this trailer to make it the toughest casita on earth. Hi, my name's Chris Moore. I own a local company called Texas Customs and Accessories. We specialize in automobile lift kits, stereo systems, uh, a lot of custom work. We do a lot of trailer repairs as well. But most of all, we specialize in special requests. You see this casita behind me is owned by a friend of mine named Bill. And he had a request to be able to take this thing anywhere and everywhere he wanted to go. So starting from the front with the chassis, we've got a I-beam right here that you can't you cannot tell it's an I-beam. The reason we have an I-beam, let me step back here where you can see, is the way the McHitch bolts up with four bolts to the tongue, we capped off each end with quarter inch plate. This stretches back to about this area here where it ties into the factory frame. But from there, we took two inch by four inch by 125 thousandths tubing, which is used on a lot of hot rod chassis and we stretched the frame length on the front and the rear. We had a couple reasons for doing this. One, we wanted to improve the way that this trailer tows. Two, we needed more ride height because we're going to get off road with this thing. Uh, and three, we needed a structure for the rear deck which we'll get to in a minute. But this chassis has been welded from front to back, just stitch welded all the way through so the two frames actually became one. So basically what we're doing is we completely cut the suspension out that was put in from the factory and start over with what we want to put under there. What we decided to install is a Dexter custom torsion axle. This is a 5200 pound torsion spring inside of basically an 8k spindled axle so we're riding with eight lug wheels on a large toyo all-terrain tire this is actually a light truck tire designed for uh, highway use but we wanted a radial that would ride really smooth and that's also why we upgraded to the aluminum wheels uh, some people thought that this would be too heavy duty of an axle but by putting the 5200 pound torsion spring in there we still have an amazing soft ride so his cargo doesn't get beat up at all uh, and that's really important when you get off road you're in these off camber situations or you're going across the desert and it's rough you don't want to open the door at the end of the day when you get to where you're going and all of a sudden your cargo's laying everywhere so we've we've accomplished a soft ride but also upgraded to bearings that we're not going to have to worry about brakes that could stop the truck let alone itself, 
Uh, so the brake size been upgraded from a 10 inch brake to a 12 inch drum brake. Stayed with electric brakes, very simple. Uh, these parts are available off the shelf at any supplier that carries trailer parts. The front has what was called the Mick Hitch, manufactured in Australia, which has a U-joint coupler that allows you to get into extreme inclines, declines, uh, off camber, tilts. So this hitch will not come off. It, it will not bind up. I mean, you can, you can completely fold it over almost backwards. So this hitch is a must for guys that want to get off road. Uh, the front here, since we stretched the frame, we put two spare tires on the front with a custom sort of a grill guard uh, tire rack. This is all handmade. Uh, this is not something you can order off the shelf. This, this is one off. The simple things like the hitch on the front. This is a drop leg hitch, so instead of having to carry a board, you can simply drop that jack leg down, pin it, and immediately start lifting the trailer. Now, this is also well over what rated for the weight capacity. We're at uh, a 7,000 pound lift capacity on a jack, but we won't ever have to work on it again. So, walking towards the back, Oh, little things like the running lights. On these casitas, they're horrible about busting the lenses out all the time. So what we did here, this is an armored marker light, typically seen on agricultural trailers. We took two different lights and actually made our own LED fixtures. The reason we did that is because the lenses on the incandescents actually bolt on and the LEDs do not. They just slip on. They're problematic. So we didn't spare any cost. We bought two sets of lights, tore them apart, and made one set that now he doesn't have to worry about lenses coming off or being broken. So here at the rear of the chassis, we have a custom platform that Bill's request ultimately is to be able to carry a motorcycle on. So this is load bearing. It's tied in with the chassis that we were talking about earlier that starts from the front, runs all the way to the back. So you have two by four tubing that ends right here into the tubing that we have going around the perimeter. This isn't your standard basket you would see on the back of a vehicle, Jeep, motorhome, what have you. This actually follows the contour of the shape of the casita. We needed something that had style. Bill doesn't want something that just bolts on and was mail order. It, it, it's gotta be right for the vehicle and we take take that into consideration whenever we're figuring out what we're going to do to meet the customer's needs. Now, he also want, wanted the most reserve ampacity that we could get in batteries, so we have a very large Group 31 deep cycle gel cell battery, two of them, which on top of the camper there are two solar panels that keep a trickle charge to this and maintain them. Uh, he says that he hasn't had to charge these at all and hasn't had any problem since we've installed this six months ago and he's been on several trips. So on the rear, we've installed a wireless camera system manufactured by Boyo. This wireless camera has a very good detail. Uh, you can see day or nighttime. Bill wanted to be able to see stuff, what's going on behind him at all times. So this is not a reverse camera system. It can be set up like that but what he wanted is actually when he has his motorcycle here or if he's getting ready to back up out of a parking lot be able to at any time know what's going on behind the uh, camper so he had us install this wireless camera to install the camera it's not a very hard install it takes about two hours but what you have to do is to get power drill into the top of the roof tie into some of the existing power wires for the camera, I mean for the, the RV, which powers the camera, and that allows him to wirelessly transmit to the truck. From the truck, he can monitor at all times what's going on behind the camper. All right, so you notice we've got these 
nice bright LEDs. They not only look good, but they offer safety. You can see the LEDs at least twice as far as you can a regular incandescent bulb. Uh, the entire camper, as far as interior and exterior, have all been replaced with LEDs. There's a few reasons for doing this. One, the aesthetics. They look good to have uh, that pure white light instead of the, the old yellow dingy light that everybody is used to. Uh, so LEDs update the look inside and out, but also uh, the low amp draw. He can run the interior LEDs for literally days upon days and never touch the batteries because one, we've got Group 31 Deep Cycle AGM gel cell batteries, which are maintenance free, but they have a over a 100 amp hour rating and we've got two of those batteries with two solar panels on the roof. So he actually has not had to charge this system at all. And a large portion of that goes to the fact that everything's been converted to LED. So efficiency is there. So Bill wanted this camper to be basically off the grid. Where he travels, there's nobody to check you in at the front gate to pay your little lot rent fee and to bring your cord out and hook up to shore power. We've installed a Honda generator, two dual batteries, as well as on the roof, there are solar panels. So this system with low amp draw because of all the LEDs, everything that we've done to make it efficient, he can get in the middle of nowhere and hide from civilization for days.